Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Have you ever gone fishing? Ever gone fishing for hours and hours and hours and caught nothing? Now, I'm not talking about the day that you went out and you didn't mind catching nothing because it was a nice break from the craziness of life. You had a quiet morning, and even though you didn't catch any fish, it didn't bother you. I'm talking about the morning where you have packed up, you have prepared, you have gone to a particular place to catch a particular kind of fish, and you were there for hours, maybe days, and didn't catch a thing. Or maybe you're not a fisherman. Maybe you've never gone fishing. Maybe you've done something else where you've prepared and you've worked for hours of toil and it ends up fruitless. It ends up feeling like you've accomplished nothing. I'm pretty sure each of us knows that feeling. The feeling of working at something tirelessly only to have it return empty. But one of the assurances that we have as the church of Christ is that in Christ, our labor is not in vain. That the work that we do as the church does not return empty. That it isn't a futile effort. Now the word labor in Greek is also the same word used to denote toil. And I like using the word toil because toil seems to have more of a connotation of the spinning of your wheels and getting nowhere. So when Peter refers to the toil that they underwent when they were fishing at night, that's what he means. That feeling of working and working and working and coming back empty-handed. Now this doesn't refer to engaging in a mindless task for no reason, but it's meant to reassure us that when it seems like the effort we're putting in, in service, to God and the gospel. When it doesn't seem like it's doing any good, it's not making any difference, we have the promise from God himself that that's not true. That anything done in Christ is fruitful. Our gospel reading today, which one could argue is the beginning point of the whole church, the calling of the first disciples to follow Jesus and his ministry, teaches us and illustrates that this was a blessing from God at the very beginning of the church. And it still continues today. Last week we looked at this new word. This new word that is astonishing everyone with its authority. And we learned that it doesn't possess a persuasive authority, but the absolute authority of station. That when Jesus commands things, it's God speaking and therefore it accomplishes what it says. Well, Luke highlights the word of God again here in our gospel reading today. Right at the very beginning, he tells us that this is the specific reason that these crowds are pressing in on Jesus, wanting to hear him. They want to hear this word of God, the text tells us. Well, this new authoritative word is present in three parts in our text today. The first part begins with Jesus' teaching from the boat, right? The very reason all those crowds were gathered together. The second is the command he gives to Simon to fish. And the third is his declaration in his word that Simon's going to be a different kind of fisherman. His calling to be fishers of men. And in doing so, in looking at these three parts... We're also going to be reassured that for us today in the church, these very same promises, this very same new word which possesses authority is still at work through us today. So the first part of the authoritative word in the text for our gospel reading today is not really given in a lot of detail. It just says that Jesus taught. But we do notice that Luke highlights the very reason that people are seeking Jesus, because earlier he's been doing some pretty incredible miracles and things, but they've gathered because they want to hear this word of God. And so Jesus sets out on a boat 
so that he can address the whole group. And he sits down and he begins teaching. That's the first part, that Jesus was preaching a sermon, just as he'd been teaching in the synagogues each week leading up to this. And this section is ended with the phrase, and when he had finished speaking. And when Jesus had finished speaking, we move to the second part. The second part is where this new word again demonstrates its status-based authority as a word that comes from God. Jesus commands Simon Peter with this new word. And he gives him two commands. He says, Jesus commands Peter, he says, go out into the deep. Which is significant for two reasons. One, if anybody's ever asked you to go to the same place to work on something that you've just spent hours making no progress on, you're probably not very inclined to go. And two, in the ancient world, the deep ocean was sig signified, it was a symbol of chaos and the unknown further emphasizing the act of faith that follows on the part of Peter. Figuratively speaking, he's going out into the unknown. So go out into the deep. And then the second command, and let down your nets for a catch. So not only has Jesus told Simon Peter to go back to the same spot, now he's telling him to do the exact same thing that he just spent all night doing and accomplishing nothing. Can you imagine that for a moment? This brings to memories to me of doing yard work for my dad when I was a kid and having worked for hours and hours and hours and then imagining that he would then tell me as soon as I was done to go back out and do it all over again. How demoralizing would that be? How inclined are you going to want to be to be like, yeah, I'll go back out and do that or you'll be like, no. I got nothing done. It was horrible. It was hard work. I don't want to do it. But that isn't what Peter does. He does express some skepticism. He says, well, Lord, I mean, I don't know if you know, but you pointed to the exact place that we were, we were fishing all night, and we cast out our nets, and we got nothing. But does he obey? He obeys. And Luke takes special care to specifically point out what Peter is obeying. Here's what Peter says. He says, I don't know, Lord. I mean, we've been fishing all night, but at your word, I will let down the nets. Peter doesn't quite know everything that's going on yet, but he knows that something about the words that Jesus speaks is different. Right? Last week, the crowds recognized that. What is this word that possesses authority? So what happens when Peter obeys at the word of Jesus? It's certainly not a vain labor or a futile toil. He goes out and he casts out the nets and he gets so many fish, the nets start to break. And they're panicking because their ship is starting to sink too, so they've got to call in another boat to get this fish into their boat. And it says even that the two boats were sinking under the weight of this catch of fish. Unbelievable. And then what is Peter's response? He knows that he's in the presence of something, someone special. And it's sort of reminiscent of our Old Testament reading where Isaiah sees the grandeur of God. Peter was just given a glimpse of the grandeur of God, and the response was to fall on his knees and implore the Lord to depart from him because he knew he was unworthy to be in the presence of God. Just like Isaiah, woe to me, for I am a sinful man. I'm a man of unclean lips among a people of unclean lips. And if you've ever had a moment like that in your life, where the glory of God is made apparent to you, you do have that reaction. You all of a sudden become acutely aware of all the reasons that God should have no business dealing with you, much less dealing with you in mercy. 
our confession each week is emblematic of this aspect of our relationship with God. We come here and confess our sins knowing that when we come into the presence of our God and His house, we are unworthy to be here. That all we can do is implore the mercy of Jesus. So Peter has cast out the nets, caught this unbelievable catch of fish. Everybody is in awe. So what was the difference between the futile toil of the night before and the successful catch of fish? It's the same boats. It's the same nets. It's the same fishermen. I mean, all these guys, they know what they're doing. It's not like they went out and toiled all night because they were inexperienced and didn't know what they were doing. They, that's their livelihood. They're all fishermen by trade. These are like the guys that you would go to to ask questions about how to catch fish. So it's all the same stuff, but what's the one difference? The word of Christ. The command of Jesus to go and do this thing. And all of a sudden, it's transformed. This mundane activity, this empty toil is transformed. Does that sound familiar to you? It should as Lutherans. Maybe you've been in your catechism lately and you know that one of the questions in there is, how can water do such great things? Of course, that's referencing baptism. And what is the answer that Luther provides? Certainly not just water, but water and the Word does these things. Certainly this isn't just bread and wine up here, because the Word makes it the body and blood of Jesus. This Word that does what it says, that accomplishes with that which it speaks, that is the difference. It makes all the difference in the world. In our gospel reading, it's the difference between futile action that yields no results and the most successful single cast of a net ever. And in our lives, it makes all the difference between getting wet and having some bread and wine and being claimed as a child of God and participating in the sacrifice of sin and the resurrection of the dead. Has God ever given you a similar charge to the one he gives Peter here? Where he seems to be calling you to go and do something that you feel like you've been doing forever and getting nothing done. A command that feels like it's the same vain labor that you've been toiling with for so long. Maybe it's prayers for a friend or a loved one to come back to the faith. Maybe you've been praying for years and you just wonder when it's going to take. And yet, you read the Bible and that word still calls you back to lift them up in prayer, to bear witness to Jesus about them. Or maybe it's serving a neighbor of yours or a co-worker whom you seek to deepen your relationship with, but they're very stubborn and unkind. And yet, you're still called to treat them with love and respect and, share, and seek opportunity to share the gospel with them. Or maybe you're a parent and you're fighting with your kids about going to church or confirmation or some other tasks that the Word has laid upon your family. Or maybe it's simply reading the Bible at home. And you've been in that task and it feels like the result has been nothing. And yet still, go out to the deep and cast out your nets. Go to that same place and do that same thing. But what's the difference? The difference is that Christ is in it. So we know that it is not a labor done in vain. And this brings us to our third part of the text, where this new word makes itself known. The third part is after this amazing thing has happened, Simon Peter has fallen in confession and Christ has said, do not be afraid. So he accepts this confession. He says, you don't need to fear me. I haven't come in judgment of your sin. And not only that, but I am going to make you a catcher of men, a fisher of men. This new word has charged those who follow Christ to go and catch men. And as I demonstrated with the kids, that doesn't mean that we go out with a fishing line and a really big hook or a big net and throw them at people. 
It's talking about this new word, sharing this new word, knowing that that new word is within you and goes with you wherever you go. And that is our assurance as the church of Christ. This third part assures us that not only what the work of the church will be, but that it will have Christ's word, Christ himself in it. Therefore, it is not in vain. Because Jesus has commanded us to do it. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that I have commanded you. I will be with you to the end of the age. Jesus is in the work of the church. He's in that word today. The very same word that said, go out into the deep and cast out your nets and yielded all that fish so many years ago. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus and his words are with you in all of your God-given tasks and all of the things that he's called you to do, the love of your neighbor, the prayers that you lift up, for those you love, and maybe even those you don't. The call to spread his word. This new word that possesses an authority unlike any other. Jesus' word has authority, the authority from God. And that word has been given to you and me. It now lives inside of us. That word commands unclean spirits, fevers, and fish. It also commands Satan, sin, and death. Your Lord has spoken. Your sins are forgiven. You have life eternal. And now, like Simon, you are sent. So, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may our response echo Simon's in our gospel reading today. At your word, I will do it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge that this word is for you and for all for whom you're sent until Christ comes again to make everything new. Amen.